While I look like I work at a Princess Auto store, I don't, but I did buy pretty much everything that you can see here from Princess Auto to do something that we haven't done for probably 20 years. That is waste snowmobiles with the actual fluids that they're driven with. Full tank of fuel, full on coolant, and full oil. We haven't done this for a while. Super Tracks used to do it. We kind of got in trouble by some people for doing it. Here we are doing it again. I'm gonna give you the real weights of the snowmobiles that we rode this winter. I can't give you everything because we don't have everything. What you see is what you get, but we're gonna make sure that we tell you what the actual real world snow tracks weights are for these snowmobiles. All right, so right here we have the Polaris 9R. This is the Chaos, it's a 146 and we just filled it up with fuel and oil and it's full of coolant. And yes, we did zero it out for the straps. Don't worry, don't everybody online stress and lose your minds, we did zero it out. Let's see what it weighs. And please don't comment on how we're strapping this vehicle. I know there's gonna be people on there who are just dying to say we're doing it wrong. We're lifting the vehicle, okay? So everybody just chill, grab your coffee, grab a beer. Certain types of beer are okay with us. And just enjoy the show, okay? Let's go. Pretty sure we can accurately say it's between 515 and 516 pounds. Fluctuates a little bit between there, so I'm gonna call it five, well, it's going up to 517 now, so it's settling at 517. 517 pounds, 146, Polaris Chaos, 9R, that's that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, we're lifting the Titan S4. This is the four stroke. It's big, all accessories left on. It's definitely gonna weigh more than the 9R. Let's see. I think we can definitively say that the Titan S4 weighs 839 pounds. That's where it's balanced out at, and that's full of fluids. Gas is topped up. Obviously, it's a four-stroke, so it has oil in the engine. 839. This is the Expedition SE 900 Turbo, not Turbo R. And yes, it does have a trail permit on, so that will add weight. The Expedition SE, 792.5 pounds. And gotta remember this does have the air shock. It's a pretty fully featured sled, so I didn't expect it was gonna be light. All right, so up next is the Polaris Matrix Switchback Assault 146. This has the 1352 Cobra on it. It is not the Ice Cobra and it does have the 7S display. So let's see how much it weighs. So this one comes in at 586.5 pounds. Full of fuel, full of oil, full of coolant. All right, next up is the Polaris Indy XC 129S4. This does not have the 7S display, but it is the S4 four-stroke, so obviously it's gonna weigh just a bit more than the two-stroke. Let's find out. So the Polaris Indy 129XC S4 comes in at 683.5 pounds. So this is a 128 XCR 850, no 7S display. I think it's gonna be light, let's find out. It's 
that the lightest sled yet? 584 pounds for the XCR, but I'm interested because up next is the Renegade XRS. I know it's a longer track, but I'm really interested to see how close in weight they are. Okay, so give me a second. It might take me a bit to get the naming for the snowmobile. This is the Renegade XRS 850. It's a 137 because it's a Renegade. Yes, it does have an ice ripper in it. It also has the 10 and a quarter inch screen. And then on top of that, it's also smart shocks. It's a lot of things this snowmobile is and it's really good too, but let's see how much it weighs. So this Skidoo weighs 653.5 pounds. I was interested as compared to the XCR, but actually the next slide I'm more interested about because it's the MXZ Blizzard. And I guess in reality, that sled really is the competitor for the XCR or a lot closer. If it was uh, an XRS, it would be exact competitor, but it's gonna be a little bit tighter. So let's see how much weight we lose between a Renegade with smart shocks and 10 and a quarter to a Blizzard with, I believe it's got the regular screen, still an 850, but a 129. Let's see how much the weight changes. All right, so this is the 850 MXZ Blizzard 129. It does have an ice ripper on it, um, and it does have KYB piggybacks, which obviously this sled came with. So really this is more of a comparable to the XCR, and I'll be interested to see what the weight difference is between those two. So we'll try to bring it up on screen and maybe do a side-by-side -side for you to show you. But um, yes, this isn't the exact competitor for the X XCR, but if it was an XRS, it would be. Um, going with what we've got here, I think it's gonna be pretty close. There is a couple of things on this. We have the Kimpex Connect uh, brackets and rails. I'm gonna say that that's probably a five pound penalty. So we'll take five pounds off whatever the weight is. That's gonna be what it is. So the Blizzard is 634 pounds, which makes it considerably heavier than the XCR. Still a great ride in sled though. All right, next sled, MXZ Neo Plus. Need I say more? There really are no options. Let's weigh it. All right, the Neo Plus comes in at 497 pounds. Fully wet, not dry. This thing has fuel, it has oil, it is ready to rock. Okay, next up is the Indy VR1. It's got the Patriot Boost, has a 7S display. Um, I mean, it's a VR1, it pretty much comes fully featured. Something that I didn't mention at the start, Obviously we're using tie straps in here, so we are going to put the weight of tie straps beside each weight that we put up on screen, just so you know exactly what the weight of those are. And yes, we are gonna put them on a proper scale. We do make sure that all the straps are up on the seat, just so that everything's equal. We've pretty much used one strap for everything. One sled we had to use three straps for. So that's gonna be in there, but let's find out what this VR1 weighs. So the Patriot Boost, with arguably the most horsepower, has weighed in at 606.5 pounds, which is, well, it's lighter than a lot of other 850s. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so up next is the Yamaha Sidewinder. I believe this is an LTX SE but I'm not 100% certain because Yamaha doesn't put the sticker on the snowmobile like they used to. It used to have a nice little sticker that said what it was, and I always get them mixed up, whether it's the SE, the GT, or the other variations. So I'm pretty sure that this is the LTX SE. We'll verify that and put it on screen. Let's find out what it weighs. It doesn't really have any uh, different options because it comes the way that it is. It has a nice Kashima coated uh, Fox shocks on it. Um, no pre-studded track, so there you have it. Let's see what it weighs. So the Yamaha weighs in at 669 pounds, which is actually pretty good 
when you consider some of the other two-stroke sleds that came in above six, I'm very impressed with how light this sled really is, considering that it's a four-stroke and it's like 200 plus horsepower, or I know it's not necessarily yes dyno numbers, but it's right in that range. It's very fast, so pretty quick sled, not all that heavy. So this is the final sled for right now. This is an Indy SP650. It's a 137. It does not have the 7S display and it does not have a pre-studded track. So let's see exactly what this weighs in at. The SP650 tips the scales at 575.5 pounds. Hopefully this has been interesting for you. We really wanted to give you the actual numbers that you ride a snowmobile at because when you look on a website from a manufacturer, the number they give you is absolutely zero fluids in it. I'm not even sure if it has electric start if they have the acid in the batteries. It's like dead bones dry. So this is really the way I think that we should weigh snowmobiles. It's what we used to do back in the day with super tracks. It's what we used to always get in trouble for because nobody wanted to say the real weights. Well, here they are. Love it, hate it. This is what it is. We're not trying to hide anything. We're not trying to cover anything up. This just is the weights of the snowmobiles that we have on site. Hope you enjoy.